Hi guys, my name is Sophia Carey and I'm a fashion photographer based in London and Manchester. Today's video is my most requested one yet and um, today I'll be basically going through my editing process with you. So I'm going to take you on shoot, um, I'm going on shoot in about an hour and a half so I'm going to take you along with me and then we're going to come back here and I'm going to go through some tips on using Lightroom, go through my whole like process start to finish. Sorry if you can hear the fan in this video. Um, I'm sitting in the kitchen because I'm moving house tomorrow and there's just stuff everywhere so this is the only room that we can kind of film in and I can't turn that fan off so we're just going to have to kind of deal with it today. So I've imported photos into Lightroom, um, into a new library, and I'm just going to go through this photo to start with. Um, it's the first one in the gallery. Um, we're going to edit this and then we'll go through a few different looks. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort the composition out. So I press R, which um, brings up the crop tool. You can also fix this here. You press O, then it's going to switch the grid that you can see. And then if you just keep clicking O, then it's going to cycle through the different like variations. This one shows you the golden ratio. Um, and if you press Shift O, then that's going to switch that so you can kind of make it work. But for this, I'm just going to use the normal grid here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of this headspace. I don't like all this space around her. And I'm going to keep her centre in the frame. Um, I'm going to look over here at my navigation so that I can proper see how my composition is looking. And then I like that. I'm going to press OK. Another tip if you want to see, like, isolate your picture to see what's happening um, away from all of this stuff around it um, would be press L. And then if you press it again, it will go dark and it just isolates the image. OK, cool. So. Now we've sorted the composition, um, I might again adjust it, but for now this is what I'm liking. I'm going to apply a preset uh, to sort some of the colours out. So the presets that I'm going to be using and cycling through are from my new pack, which as of now are available for purchase. I will link it in the description and show you somewhere on the screen where you can get those if you are interested. But yeah, I'm gonna apply a preset, we're gonna tweak it and have a look. Okay, so I'm thinking this one. Um, right, and I'm gonna just zoom in. Um, her skin doesn't really need touched up, uh, especially because it's such like a far off, like long shot. Um, so I'm just gonna play about with the tones. Okay, so. I really like, if you've seen my work before, I really like flat whites. So this is when we bring the whites and the highlights down and just flatten these kind of tones. But for this one, I think I need to add a little bit more contrast, especially for the skin. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be not flattening those all the way. Another way you can control your shadows and highlights um, is by using a tone curve. So this bottom left one, controls the blackest point of your image and then this one controls the white point which is your brightest point of your image so you can see if we bring this up you're changing how the white point looks and this is how you would achieve those like crushed whites by just bringing that down and then another like trendy thing is to bring these blacks up um, and you crush the blacks but for this image i'm not going to be doing that i'll keep that there um, another thing you can do is press, if you're on a Mac, press the little slash button and you can see the before and after. Or you can click here and you see the before and after side by side. The great thing to make note of is this little button here under lens correction, which basically is called enable profile corrections. And what this does is it recognises um, what lens you have used and enables the corrections to get rid of any distortion that lens will have caused. 
If you click this, you can see how all of this darkness around the side of the imagery just disappears and this distortion just goes. If Lightroom doesn't automatically detect what lens you're using, you can use this little bit around here to select your lens. Okay, cool. So let me go back to the normal view. I'm liking this edit, a really quick one actually, um, but I'm going to keep that one in. And then because this image is very similar in terms of tones and colours, well, I'm going to just paste that. So I'll go back and do it again. And I click Command C to copy, copy all of these um, local adjustments that I made. And then you can also do that by pressing this. And then go back into here, press Command V. Um, and you can also do it by pressing that. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to fix the composition again. I really like to straighten any horizontals and verticals. So here we can see that there's these lines that we want to follow. Um, I think that's important. Um, a good thing to note is that you can use this little ruler to draw onto the image. Um, say your horizon's there, you can straighten it against it. So yeah, it's a really good way to do it. Cool, again, I'm going to be referring to this little navigation panel to look at the composition. Okay, cool, I like that again. Um, I'm just going to bring the shadows up slightly, just to lighten it up, very, very slightly. And maybe flatten the highlights a little bit. Okay, cool, perfect. Right, so let's go in, seeing as this is a portrait. Okay, so my model here has actually really good skin, but I just want to show you what you can do in Lightroom to correct skin. Because a lot of people move into Photoshop, which I would suggest because it does have good capabilities, more capabilities for skin retouching than Lightroom does. If you just need to make minor adjustments like these ones, Lightroom should do it. Okay, unfortunately this image isn't that sharp, but we will be fine. So I'm just going to click this bit here. And this is um, effectively a spot healing brush. So you can choose the size of your brush. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And then you click on the spot and it will sample from another area. And you can choose how much it feathers, the opacity of that. Um, healing and you can also switch from healing which kind of merges it more to clone which is a direct copy and paste of the sample so yeah like I said like you really I don't really don't need to be doing much of this because this model has really good skin and um, but it's just a thing that you can do if you need to um, another thing you can do is click this little mask tool and then you just paint, oh, that's a little bit small. Um, let me, no problem. Just go down to my size and make that a bit bigger. And then I can select this little bit where the skin under her eyes is a little bit darker. And then I can come up here and just change that section of the skin. So you can see that all I'm changing with these adjustments is that tiny bit. So uh, yeah, I think, I think that's good. Um, we'll make it look really natural, so. Okay, so if we zoom back out again and then see the before and after. A good thing about before and afters as well is that we can really pay attention to the skin tones and how much, if at all, those skin tones are being altered. Just a quick um, tip actually, if you were wanting to, if you were just playing about with the exposure and you did loads of different changes just with the exposure and you wanted to reset your exposure without resetting the whole image, if you just double tap that, it will reset. Uh, same with highlights, it will reset um, anything. So just double click the one that you're on and it will reset back to zero. Another tip that I find quite useful is clicking J. So when you click J what it will show you is where the clipping is. So in this instance this is showing me that this part of the image is blown out. This is really useful especially when you've already done the edit because sometimes it's difficult for the eye to properly notice where parts of the images are blown out or too dark for example. So let's place my adjustment in and press J. All right, so it looks like we haven't got much clipping here, but I will, I'm sure we will find an example later on where I can show you that in 
use. And if you guys can see the bottom, what I've actually got here is a quick collection. So I've gone through the photos from my library because there's like a thousand or so and selected a few that I'm going to edit in this video. And a lot of people cull in different ways. For me, my preferred method is by adding, adding a photo to my quick collection. You can either click B and that will remove or add to a quick collection or you can hover over the image and click this little button here. And then when you go here, you can go into your quick collection and the photos that you've selected are all here. This is really useful. Um, some people do it in very different ways. So for example, you can use the keypad to write something one, two, three, five, um, and then use the filter section to filter it by what you've rated. But for me, like I said, all I do is add it to a quick collection. This works for me, it might not work for you, but it's a thing to think about just for speed of editing, workflow kind of tips. Okay, so here's a new set of images. Right, we're gonna again cycle through the presets and see which one I like in terms of tones. So I'm gonna go for a very similar thing to the other set, um, just as the outfit is the same. So I'm gonna go for a four again. I think that was the one that I used last time. Um, and again, straighten that. Now the image is looking a little bit dark so I'm just going to slightly bring the exposure up. Um, a tip if you just drag this out you can see how much we're bringing the exposure up rather than accidentally bringing it up all the way to the end and not realizing how much we're bringing it up. Um, yeah that's half, I'm happy with that and then I'm going to bring the shadows up slightly as well. Okay nice and collapse that. I really don't think that's quite centre. Yep I'm happy with that right now I'll copy and paste that again. And to this. Okay, another new set. Okay, so for this image, the lighting is very different to the images we've really edited, and as is the output. So, um, what we need to note here is that a lot of the model is in the shade, and a lot of her is really blown out in the sun you can see on FSJ that all of this section is blown out. Okay so when we apply a preset to the Eureka 7 what you'll see is that the blown out areas are brought back a little bit. This is why it is very important to shoot in raw. What raw means is that there is more information basically saved about the photo. This means that you're going to be able to restore details that aren't obvious in the in the photo. So where all this was blown out previously, I've been able to restore this. Um, if things were too dark, I'd be able to restore some sort of information there as well. So to achieve this, I'm just going to take away the preset and we're going to go through this step by step, just on how to bring back these highlights, bring back these areas. So these parts of the images are the highlights. And if you're ever unsure about what kind of part of the image this is, you can click this little button here and then select it and you can bring it down that way and it will show you. So right now it's showing me that that's the highlight section. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to bring it down here in this highlight, these highlights, bring it down in these whites. As you can see, we've already got a little bit of the image back. And then again, you can bring the exposure down if you really want to see that coming up. But obviously then that makes this part of the image a little bit darker. That's where we bring up the shadows and the blacks. And, that, and there you have the image. Okay, so I'm going to reapply preset 7. And I'm going to bring up the blacks and the shadows just to get a bit more light in. And then I'm just going to play about with the temperature because I'm not really happy with it. HSL sliders. So this is basic. These basically affect all the different colors in your image. So if I brought the red up, you can see that the reds come up. If I brought the greens up, you can see that the greens over here have come up. And yeah. Okay. So in this image, although the colors are similar and the outfit is similar, the lighting is a little bit different. So we're going to paste what we did over here and paste it onto this. 
but it looks like we might need to tweak a little bit. So I'm going to start by bringing the exposure down. Um, uh, as we can see, the highlights are still a little bit blown out here. Okay, new set, um, quite drastically different light, um, again, so for this one I'm going to apply number 15. Already it's a little bit dark, straight away we know what the issue is. Uh, the model's face is a little bit difficult to see with the shadows and the highlights kind of fighting off each other. So what I'm going to do to fix this is just bring up these shadows, it's really as easy as that. Um, and then you can play about with flattening or making these highlights stronger. I'm going to actually flatten the whites and bring the highlights up. Um, I'm also going to bring the contrast down. Okay, so for this image, again, we've got a really different light scenario. The preset I'm going to apply for this was made specifically for this kind of lighting, um, and that's number 10. So it basically neutralizes and brings up the shadows. But I am going to tweak it slightly, just bring up the exposure a tiny bit and bring down the temperature because it's slightly bit warm. Okay, so for this picture I'm going to apply um, 06 um, and then I'm just going to bring down the some of the blacks in the shadows and I swept the highlights and then yeah I'm going to keep it quite warm. Okay then we're going to go over to this one and we're going to use the same preset that we just tweaked over here and paste it onto this. As you can see the sky is really blown out so what I'm going to do is just bring the whites and highlights down a little bit and you start to see a little bit more detail. And I'm happy with that. Okay, so for this one, we have a few issues in that there's like a abundance of red. It's really overwhelmingly red. So I'm going to pick number four to start with. And then I'm going to bring down the temperature a tiny bit. And then add like a green tint just to break up that, that red. And then we can start playing around with the tones. Gonna keep these down just because we've got quite a lot of blown out ground over here where the sun's hitting it. And then I'm gonna reduce the contrast just a tiny bit just to bring a bit more light into it. Just gonna change the way the it slips slightly just by moving this bit in the tone curve. Let me just lift that a little bit. And then I think I can take this across a little bit more. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Cool. Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to add number 13. Make it a little bit warmer, flatten the whites, and adjust the composition. I'm going to put this photo where there are a few different kinds of lights involved. I'm going to paste the preset on again, bring down the exposure, and adjust the composition. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to apply number one. Just the composition. And make it a little bit darker. What I really like about this one is that it maintains a lot of the natural colours. 